Welcome back, YouTube. I realize I've been out of the shop here for a while. About two months, I think. But I had a bunch of other stuff to do. We uh, planted a garden. That was pretty cool. And I took up one of my other hobbies. My uh, daughter got me this R2-D2 for Father's Day. That thing's pretty cool. If uh, y'all don't have the talent to be a woodworker, you ought to try these Legos. Things are really well engineered. I mean, it's just cool. But, anyways, reason for the video today is I think I found a new joint. I'm going to call it the uh, 345 joint because it's made up of 345s. Now, what led me to this is the fact that today's prices on everything have went way up. So, I'm a smoker. I don't condone smoking. No nicotine. I don't. That's not something anybody should do. It's a bad habit. But as where I am a smoker, it was costing me around three hundred dollars a month to smoke, which is just literally sending money up in flames. So I had to cut that back. So I started rolling my own cigarettes. Now, when you roll your own cigarettes. There's not really a, a bunch of places to put them. So I was putting them in, back in the tube containers that are just real thin cardboard. They kind of look like this. But I thought, well, I have a nice box for my cigars. My wife bought me this beautiful humidor for my cigars. And it uh, works very well. And it's pretty. It's not ugly. I thought, well, why couldn't I turn this into something like this? So, we went ahead and I built something to put the cigarettes in. Now this will hold about 300 cigarettes. And the joint that I speak of is here. And we'll get some closer pictures of that here in a little bit. That actually looks like this picture. And I might show you all how to make it today. So, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make it. Because I have some leftover stuff. I got some leftover Paduke that I used for the red. I bought that eighth inch Paduk from Woodcraft and here in the center it's stacked up three times. You have the one that's inserted into the dado stack and then I build it up by two here and cut 45s all around it. Same here on the side. Little diamond shapes. Same on the back. Same on the side. And then the top we just cut some thin strips on top of the white oak and we trimmed them off at 45. We'll get you some closer pictures right about now. This is when it was being done. So I just stained it in these pictures and it looks really well. We've got a little bit of wear on it here the last couple of weeks but you know it still looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you all how to make these joints and uh, no, didn't freeze. I froze. Anyway, <laughs> this stack of aluminum over here I rescued from the landfill. It was fitting to be thrown in a dumpster. So I uh, brought it home with me. And we are going to make a router sled out of this in an upcoming video. If you want to see that, like, subscribe, and uh, hit that bell so you can see when I do that. We'll be doing that in the next couple of weeks because I'm going to make a table top for a toolbox. And we're going to do that out of power wood. Alright, so let's get on these joints. So, here I'm just cutting the paduke for the joints. It's not really important to the joint. It just kind of gives that added effect. 
The strips that I use for the side are half inch. And the slot in my plate is about a sixteenth over a half inch. So you, as you can see, cutting dados right down the center is a problem. So I had to improvise. I made a zero clearance insert by clamping a piece of quarter inch panel and bead to my tabletop, which worked very well. So now we've run them through the saw and we got a snug fit. We are going to cut the mitered ends. Miter number one. Well, that's a little snugger, but that'll be alright. So, go on with miter number one. This is not miter number one. This is just cleaning up the inside edge to make it look a little pretty, a little more decorative. It's not really imperative to the joint that we are working on today, but it does make the box look a little better, as you can see in the arrows where it was. Here I'm gluing the panels together that will eventually make the joint. Probably not an important step to show y'all, but this is how it's made. Now, when I made this joint, it was by accident. See, I built the panels too tall. See, this goes underneath the shelf. So I had to cut about a half inch off of either side. Now, I don't know if you've all ever done that or not, but it doesn't exactly make the prettiest miter joint until now. So, I went ahead and cut a half inch off either side, and it turned out way better than I thought it would. See, it left the edges. They're not pretty miters. So, after that, we have to cut 45 number 2. This is where we cut the 45 on the edge, so that we can glue up the panels later on. And it looks like this. Again with the dark edges. Now, I didn't want to waste a whole lot of wood. So I just went ahead and cut this panel in half. And we'll go ahead and glue that up and make this pretty nice. So what I'm doing here I think is pretty standard. I'm just going to put uh, some tape on it and we're going to put some glue in it and we're going to fold it over and put some more tape on it i don't know if you guys do it differently if you got some special clamp set up but this is the easy way i could find to do it now if you're looking you can see that there are thicker in the middle and thinner at the top and you can start to see that dark pillar looks starting to show up now, I ran one right down the edge. This helps with the glue squeeze out. That takes some of the clean out time off. Now, as I start to fold it over, you'll see that pillar look come into play. But right now, I'm going to tape up these inside edges. You should try this when building a box. It's really hard to get that squeeze out out of the way when the box is all built you can't get your fingers in there it's hard to get tools in there this way all you have to do is peel that tape off and all your squeeze out comes right along with it it works really good and then we just put some tight bond three right in that mitered area and we'll use the silicone brush i gotta clean it out first which by the way is very easy you just kind of peel it off. But I use that silicone brush to spread the glue out nice and even. That kind of helps with the squeeze out as well. Now, just a little note here. Y'all should have your tape ready before you decide to fold these up. As you'll see here, old Fumble Thumbs can't seem to get his tape to work right. It's hard to get it in place. 
But, you know, I figure it out eventually. And then you just run it from one side to the other side, holding it in a perfect 45. Now, if I was actually building a box, I would put a square on this and make sure that it's nice and square. But this is just for demonstration purposes, so it's not really that big a deal. But make sure you square your stuff up when you're actually doing this in projects. You don't want a wonky 45 because your other 45s will be wonky as well. So if you look at the corner, you can see where it kind of looks like a pillar right in the center. And here is where this inside tape comes in nice and handy. Well, normally it comes in handy. It usually just peels right out, but now I got tape right in my way. But it takes all that squeeze out, right out with it, and leaves very little cleanup. You can get that with like a wet wash rag or something. Or your finger. Fingers work alright. But it cleans it up real nice, and it's nice and clean. That's the way you do inside corners when you're gluing up. So we'll let this dry overnight and we'll come back and put the other 245s on it in the morning. After letting it dry all night, we'll pull the tape off of it and we will put 45, 3, and 4 on it. As you can see, it leaves this pillar look to it. And the uh, miters don't look all that good. Done it on purpose. And you'll see why here in a minute. So, on the router we go. So the last two 45s are done on the router. I start out running a shallow pass and then I see if it's what I like. It's not. So I adjust it up and I raise it up until I get a desired look. Once I have that desired look, I'll run it all the way around. It took me about three adjustments to find the desired depth I liked. And I think it turned out alright. You may like a shallower cut or a deeper cut. It's all personal preference. I found that I liked a pretty deep cut. So, like I said, about the third pass it was about what I liked, so that's what I stayed with. Now that I have my desired look, I'm going to go ahead and run it all the way around the, what would be the tops and the bottom. Now, when I did the box, I had the whole thing put together, so I just ran them all at the same time. And it worked out pretty well. It didn't take a bunch of setups. It was just one setup, and I was able to run them all at the same time. And it surprisingly turned out very nice the whole reason I didn't build this box on video was I was scared of how it was going to turn out I wasn't sure of the structural integrity it was going to have and I wasn't sure how well it was going to look but I turned out pretty happy because my router bit cut so smooth just a little bit of light sanding to knock off some of the chip and that's all I needed. Everything else was nice and smooth. And I, it just, it's amazing how well this turned out. I'm, I'm just, I'm so happy with this joint. Y'all really should try it out and let me know what you think. I mean, I'd be good for jewelry boxes, maybe drawers. I think it'd be pretty good on a drawer. But, uh. Let me know. Hit me up in the comments and let me know if you guys try this out and if you like it. 
So that is how I do what I'm going to call the 445 joint. I know I said 345 in the beginning, but after I counted them, I realized there are actually four. You've got the one, the two that put them together, the three on top, and the four right down the corner. So, if you're not very good at making miters, this might be the miter joint for you. Because this is a good way to hide an ugly miter. I mean, look how clean that edge looks. And you've seen how ugly it was before I ran it through the router. You might try it out. Plus, it makes a pretty cool effect on the top. Gives you kind of a pillared look. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool myself. I'm probably going to do it on a few more boxes. So, if you would like to see a box like the one I built out of the Paduke and the White Oak, I have some purple heart over there. And if enough people want to see me uh, build that, I'll build one and we'll go ahead and give it away. One of my subscribers will get a chance to win it. You just have to like and comment and uh, be subscribed. So uh, that's going to end this today. I'm going to go get started on some other projects, and we'll see you in the next video. See you later.